For nearly two decades, ULA has stood as the quiet giant behind America's most critical space launches. From secretive national security missions to flagship planetary science expeditions, ULA's rockets have carried them all. But now, in a dramatic shift, ULA is on the verge of being sold. And the buyer? Blue Origin, the same company founded by Jeff Bezos, the one often mocked for slow progress, the one that's long chased the credibility and contracts ULA already owns. So why is this happening now? What does Blue Origin stand to gain, and how could this reshape the entire U.S. launch industry? Let's break it down. The first question is, why is ULA being sold in the first place? ULA is a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, created in 2006 to consolidate their launch operations under one roof. For years, this partnership made perfect sense. The U.S. government needed reliable launch services, and ULA delivered, on time, with near-perfect mission success. But over time, the space launch landscape changed. SpaceX arrived. Costs dropped. Reusability emerged as a core advantage. And ULA, with its heritage expendable rockets like Atlas V and Delta IV, suddenly looked expensive and outdated. Boeing and Lockheed Martin, meanwhile, started to shift their attention toward higher growth sectors. Space launch was no longer core to their long-term strategy. And ULA, while still profitable, became a legacy asset that no longer fit their broader business goals. By early 2024, the search for buyers had quietly begun. Enter Blue Origin. At first glance, it might seem like an odd match. ULA is old-school aerospace, deeply tied to government contracts and traditional engineering culture. Blue Origin is newer, private, and focused on long-term vision like lunar development and orbital reusability. But look a little closer, and the potential alignment starts to make sense. Both companies already share key technology, most notably the BE-4 engine. ULA's new Vulcan Centaur rocket uses it. So does Blue Origin's new Glenn. That alone creates immediate synergy. A shared engine platform could streamline production, reduce costs, and simplify long-term upgrades. Then there's infrastructure. ULA operates out of Cape Canaveral and Vandenberg, with decades of experience managing launch pads and government-certified facilities. Blue Origin, while it has its own launch site in West Texas, lacks the extensive ground infrastructure that ULA has built up over the years. Acquiring ULA means instant access to those launch complexes, without years of permitting, construction, or government negotiation. But perhaps most importantly, Blue Origin gets something money usually can't buy. ULA's reputation and its contracts. ULA has a deep relationship with the U.S. government. It is one of only two companies currently certified for the National Security Space Launch Program. The other is SpaceX. That means ULA is entrusted with launching the nation's most sensitive military satellites, some of which cost billions and are critical to defense and intelligence operations. For Blue Origin, buying ULA would immediately vault it into this elite category. No need to wait for New Glenn to prove itself. No need to go through years of certification. The government trust ULA has built could transfer directly, giving Blue Origin a shortcut into the high-stakes world of defense launch. But with that opportunity comes real complexity. Integrating two large aerospace firms is no small task. Their cultures are vastly different. ULA is methodical, risk-averse, and focused on mission assurance. Blue Origin is more experimental, focused on innovation and long-term transformation. That difference can lead to friction, especially at the management level. There's also the question of overlapping operations. ULA already has Vulcan. Blue Origin has New Glenn. Both are large orbital rockets designed to carry heavy payloads. Running both programs simultaneously may not be sustainable. Will one be phased out? Will they compete internally? Or will they be merged into a single roadmap? And what happens to ULA's leadership? Tori Bruno, ULA's CEO, is widely respected across the industry, but it's unclear whether he'll remain if the sale goes through. A change at the top could lead to uncertainty across ULA's workforce and customers. Still, if these challenges can be navigated, the potential benefits are significant. 
a combined ULA Blue Origin entity, could deliver a comprehensive suite of launch services, from suborbital flights with New Shepard to medium and heavy lift missions using Vulcan and New Glenn. Together, they would be far more competitive with SpaceX, not only in capability, but also in pricing and launch cadence. That brings us to the broader market impact. SpaceX has dominated the commercial and government launch market for years. Its reusability model, rapid iteration, and aggressive pricing have made it the go-to provider for everyone from NASA to satellite startups. But with Blue Origin acquiring ULA, that dominance could face serious pressure. ULA brings a deep customer base and flight heritage. Blue Origin brings cash, vision, and ambition. Put together, they could offer serious competition, not just technically, but politically. Government agencies may welcome a stronger alternative to SpaceX, especially as concerns rise about relying too heavily on a single provider. In fact, ULA and SpaceX are already locked in for the next phase of the National Security Space Launch Program. But in the latest round of contract awards, Blue Origin was also included despite New Glenn not yet flying. Now imagine New Glenn succeeds and Blue Origin owns ULA. That combined capability could solidify their place in the next round of NSSL missions, and from there, it's not hard to see a strengthened duopoly emerging. Of course, a deal like this won't happen quietly. The U.S. government will almost certainly intervene. Antitrust regulators will want to understand whether this reduces competition too much. Defense agencies will analyze whether national security is at risk. ULA's contracts, particularly those involving classified payloads, could trigger additional scrutiny around data integrity and operational independence. At the heart of that scrutiny is one core policy. Assured access to space. U.S. law requires at least two independent launch providers for national security missions. This acquisition, if structured carefully, would maintain that balance, at least on paper. But if the deal appears to undermine competition or limit future market entry, regulators may impose conditions or even block it outright. And then there's the price tag. ULA is reportedly valued between $2 billion and $4 billion. For Blue Origin, and by extension, Jeff Bezos, that's a major purchase. But given ULA's contract backlog, operational capabilities, and strategic value, the investment could pay off quickly. Financially, it also makes sense. Bezos has been offloading Amazon stock at an accelerated pace, freeing up billions in cash. That capital could easily be used to support Blue Origin's next phase, acquiring ULA, scaling New Glenn, and pushing toward lunar goals. With this acquisition, Blue Origin would move from being a long-term visionary to a present-day heavyweight, and ULA, long seen as a legacy player, would be reborn under a new mission, with new energy behind it. The result could be a launch provider that's more powerful than either company alone, if the integration works. If not, the combined entity risks becoming a conflicted organization stuck between heritage and ambition. What's clear is this. The sale of ULA to Blue Origin would be one of the most consequential events in the modern space era. And for the first time in years, SpaceX might have a real competitor, not just on paper, but on the launch pad. Looking ahead, another significant development in the space sector is the upcoming Axiom Mission 4, scheduled for launch on June 8, 2025. This private mission to the International Space Station, operated by Axiom Space in partnership with SpaceX and NASA, will carry a diverse international crew, including astronauts from India, Poland, and Hungary. Notably, it marks the first time an Indian astronaut will fly on a commercial mission to the ISS, conducting experiments developed by ISRO. This mission exemplifies the growing role of private companies in facilitating international space exploration and research. Stay tuned for our upcoming video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.